So chapter 6.3, perform function operations and composition. So first we have the addition and subtraction of functions. Our first function is let x, let f of x equal 4x to the 1 half, and let g of x equal negative 9 to the 1 half. So we are told to find f of x plus g of x. So let's plug in our two equations. So we have 4x to the 1 half plus negative 9x to the 1 half. Remembering our properties from the previous section, we can have 4 minus 9 times x to the 1 half. So ultimately we have negative 5x to the 1 half. Next we have f of x minus g of x. Let's set this up similarly. So we're plugging exactly in our equations, remembering that we need to keep our negative sign with g of x even though we're subtracting. So simplify this. We get 4 minus negative 9 x to the 1 half. So 13 x to the 1 half. And even though x to the 1 half is the same thing as the square root of x, we want to maintain what the original problem has, which is the 1 half. Now let's talk about multiplication and division. So we have f of x equals 6x and g of x equals x to the 3 fourths. So to multiply these together, we do exactly that. We have 6 times 6x multiplied by x to the 3 fourths. So when we multiply our exponents, we add them. So 6x raised to the 1 plus 3 fourths. Which equals 6x to the 7 fourths. And this really ties back into our chapter which dealt with properties of exponents because without doing that chapter, we would not have known that when we multiply exponents, we add them. So this is really an application of that, and it's helpful to review that if you're having trouble. Now let's divide f of x by g of x. So f of x, which is 6x, and then g of x, which is x to the 3 fourths. And remember, when we divide exponents, we are going to subtract them. So 6x, 1 minus 3 fourths. And I didn't mention this earlier, but the 1 is from the 6x because x has the um, invisible 1 or the ghostly 1 because when we just write something to the first, we write it as that number because it's an identity. So this problem, we simplify to 6x to the 1 fourth. Composition of functions. So we're going to be combining f of x and g of x in a certain way in which we're going to use both of those equations in one equation. So more specifically, let's use a problem. We have let f of x equal 2x minus 7 and let g of x equal x squared plus 4. So we're going to evaluate g of f of 3 and we're going to be solving this with these two steps here. So first just talking about what this means when we have g of f of 3. So if we have our equation, which is g of x, so x squared plus 4 is our g of x. And x is, g of x is because we have x in our equation. But if we have g of f of x, say, instead of x in our equation, we plug in the entire f of x equation for wherever there is x. So we have 2x minus 7 squared plus 4. That would be if we have g of f of x. But instead we have g of f of 3. So first we're going to find simply what f of 3 is. So we're going to plug in 3. Six minus seven, negative one. And we're going to find g of negative one. So 
So we get 5, 1 plus 4. Our next problem is let f of x equal 4x minus 1 and let g of x equal 5x minus 2. And we have three steps of evaluation here. First is f of g of x, then g of f of x, then f of f of x. So this is similar to our previous problem, except we're keeping x as our variable and not substituting a constant. So f of g of x. So normally f of x is simply 4x minus 1. But we want f of g of x. So f of g of x. We're going to plug in the entire g of x equation for wherever there's an x in our f of x equation. So 4, 5x minus 2, minus 1. 20x minus 8 minus 1, 20x minus 7. Now, g of f of x, we're taking our g equation and substituting the x equation for wherever there is x. 20x minus 5 minus 2. 20x minus 7. And these actually happen to be the same answer, but this won't always be the case. So finally, we will do the third part of our problem, is, which is to evaluate f of f of x. So let's take our f equation, which is 4x minus 1. 4 times 4x minus 1 minus 1, 16x minus 4 minus 1, 16x minus 5.